Okay, so uh, I myself looked up videos, couldn't ever find one on how to remove um, the brakes from a 1960 to 66 Chevrolet C60 pickup truck. It's a lot of S sounds. Um, anyways, uh, so I figured I'd make a video since I didn't see any other ones. And I've done this a couple of times now. Um, I did it on the other side of the truck and I uh, had a brake, um, a wheel cylinder fail uh, last time and I got the wrong one. So now I'm having to go back in and change it again. This is a time consuming thing to do. Um, you can do it relatively quick if you had all the right tools. Like for instance, the axle nut, it's gotta be hit with a, um, most, most uh, axle nuts have a specific tool like spline tool in order to take them off. This one does not. Uh, it locks in place, so you have to push back the locks. And uh, you'll see whenever we get to it, you have to. Ch I've checked around with co ops and uh, big truck shops and everything else. None of them have the one that'll fit this. So, uh, short of fabricating one, I'm just going to use a hammer and a punch, but you'll see that whenever we get to it. So, this is a video on how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna take a one and one sixteen, sorry, one and one eight uh, socket on an impact and get these off. If you have it like I had it, the very first time I tried to break these off, this truck had been sitting on a farm for years and years. They use this to move hay, big stuff on the farm, and pull cattle um, about twelve hours away. Uh, so this thing had been through it but all the it's crazy it started right up pretty much and i drove it a hundred and something miles home and been sitting for a while uh anyways over the years you can see there's rust on these lug nuts over the years that rust pretty much welded the lug nuts to it i tried breaker bars i tried running them out with the jack handle on the breaker bar i trying to get as much leverage as i could nothing worked I went to Harbor Freight and got one of those Earthquake XT impacts. That thing worked amazing at breaking it loose. It made, it just made such easy work of the job. Uh, today, mine is charging, so I have my grandpa's. It's a snap-on. Uh, not exactly sure which series it is, but it, hey, it's doing the job. I've already started with two. So we're gonna start uh, getting the rest of them. If you look, you can see what I had to do because uh, I ended up getting a brake cylinder that was meant for a brake line and not for the bleeder screw. Uh, that was just, I didn't even notice until I already had it in. So I had to rig up uh, some kind of brass fitting and put a screw in it. And that worked good enough for me to get on the trailer and off of the trailer because um, I moved from Wyoming to Tennessee. So that's where we're at. We're going to keep jacking it up. And then we're going to remove the other uh, lug nuts and we're going to start working on this. I did jack it up off the rear end and then I put my <coughs> jack stand there in the middle. Um, that way it's kind of leaning towards one end. If not, you might lose some of your fluid, uh, possibly when it's up in the air. If it tilted this way, whenever you pull out the axle shaft, it could go that way. So rethought that, put that there. And we should be good to go. Uh, obviously, this needs some attention at some point, but it's not leaking like a ton. That's just years and years of buildup. Um, so, and yeah, probably use a good service. Now. Anyways, now that we're jacked up, good to go. I might just leave this here just to uh, have some type of security there. I mean, if it hits down, I only got an inch off the ground over here. And uh, we'll take this off and get started.
got all 10 lug nuts. And now it's time to get these ridiculously heavy split wheel wheels tired off of this thing. <sighs> Okay, so I don't know that you have to take out these little flathead screws. I have both times when I've done it, and I'm pretty sure I think to myself, and I'm like, whenever I get it off, I'm like, did I even need to take those out? Like, where are they holding? So I'm going to take them out like I always have. Uh, right here from Harbor Freight these a uh, half inch drive screwdriver bit socket sets most of the time these things will not break loose uh, I know I had a heck of a time but these right here are magic and sometimes you can find these in their clearance section where they've you know had people bring stuff back or they had a tool that broke and because Pittsburgh has a lifetime warranty they have to crack open a whole pack just to get it so, I don't think they were expensive anyways, but. Okay, I think that there's three of these. You can even get them. One. You can tell I've had these out before. Uh, the first time I actually, uh, on the other side, the first thing I thought to do was get uh, one of those impact hits where you hit it with a hammer and it has a bit on it. And that worked okay, but this is a lot better. I think I could get two of them out that way. Just be careful with these. You don't want to strip them and you're never getting them out. And like I said, I don't even know that you need to get them. But <clears throat> the next step is going to be take off all five of these uh, pl uh, screws from this plate. some kind of gasket sealer on the inside of it. I don't know if that's factory or that's from farm repairs. Okay. So here's where you need some kind of bolt to thread in there to really get that out. Uh, you have to take this out and then that's when you have your axle nuts and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. Okay, sometimes when you look around an old barn long enough, you might just get lucky. And that's all it takes to pull that out. And you can see how beefy these things are. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's needed for these two-ton trucks. Okay, so here is the axle nut. Uh, complete pain. It's got these little, sorry, there's a little fluid. I told you it's dripping out. Um, anyways, it's got these little slots in it. That is normally where you would put an axle nut remover. No one makes one this size. I even checked Napa. Napa has stuff everywhere for these old trucks, but not that. Um, they told me to check big truck stores. Anyways, and then you just have little spline here that locks this axle nut into place so that whenever you're driving you can't uh, vibrate it loose or anything like that so first step we're going to go ahead and get that uh, pushed out and then we're going to try to get this axle nut off uh, without utilizing an axle nut tool all right 
Uh, a little screwdriver will also work in this. I seem to remember I hit this one in there pretty good. So I'll have to put the camera down. I really need a tripod or something. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I've kind of got it down and somewhat out of the way. I'm trying to push a little more. Kind of hard to do this with my <laughs> offhand something in the other one. But, uh, anyways, I think that may be good enough. Up there, I see a little gap in it. So now what I'm going to try to do is either use this and place it here. Uh, I can't remember if these are reverse threaded or not. I don't think that it was. But I'm going to take this or I have some punches. And I'm probably going to set the phone up there for that because I need both hands. But yeah, we should be able to knock it off. Okay. Call me back, just using one of these little punches. I'm gonna attempt to do this. Well, I left it loose enough last time. Hold on, well, it's a lot easier than the first time I've done it, so. Anyways, once you get it, you just take it, I don't know if you can see from there. Once you bust it loose, you just take it, and I just kinda use this, kinda like dialing one of those old, uh, rotary phones I guess and you can see I'm hitting something just that little key uh. all right I'll move this up there but yeah you'll just take this spin it around Okay, and you're not going to want this thing to get dirty or anything, especially in the grooves, because if you do, it'll, it'll be so annoying to get it back on. But this is what it looks like. I'd like to take this and get a tool made in case I ever have to do this on the fly or something, but uh, I'm going to always keep these tools somewhere in the truck, just in case. So I'm going to sit that down on top of my... Uh, I'm going to set it down on top of my little cap here. Try to keep everything in order. Next thing that's going to come off is this little spline keyway here. And honestly, these things can be kind of annoying to get off. Just kind of got them get them balanced all the way around. Which is also hard to do with one hand. Okay, check this. Right here, there's a little keyway. There's a spline here that has to go back in there or you're never gonna get this thing on uh, when you're putting it back together. All right, and then back there is yet again another axle nut, and that might be the tough one. It's one of these. So I'm gonna hope that that one is gonna go pretty easy as well. The inside ones should be the easy one. Okay. Like I said, like a rotary phone, I'm just gonna keep twisting this around. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Just like that. Okay. 
take this. Put it on top of your other one so you don't forget. Okay, and if you see in there, it's that bearing. Uh, we're just gonna slide the whole drum off. Probably gonna take some prying, so I'm gonna sit this up there, maybe. Like I said, uh, everything's been kinda a lot easier this time around. Yeah, I'm gonna take some prying behind the drum, but we're gonna do that, and then after we do that, we'll pull it out a little bit, and then that bearing should come with it. And uh, let's try to make sure that we see this smooth side here. Okay, now that we got all that, we are going to use one of these, see, clearance rack, uh, Harbor Freight. Sorry, it's traffic going by. Um, Harbor Freight pry bars in order to break this kind of loose. And sometimes you gotta hit these things with, a, I know the first time I did it I had to. Uh, you gotta hit these things with like a a uh, mallet or a hammer, um, a metal one works better than a rubber mallet most of the time. Uh, to kind of break loose the rust, it's kind of holding it together. Okay, and that bearing may be holding it in place, so we're going to hit it back. Okay, so first there's a washer that comes out. Got a little dirt when I was kicking it, to make sure that gets clean. And then, oh, you can see the bearing in there. Oh yeah. Also, we're going to want to remember which way this thing goes. Uh, the first time I ever tried to put that back together, um, I thought it was going the other way. And I was sadly mistaken. I spent way too much time doing the wrong thing. Here is that bearing I was talking about. Narrow side goes inward. And I'll try not to get a bunch of nasty stuff in it. So, hopefully that doesn't fall. Okay, now we take off the whole hub assembly or drum, whatever you wanna call it. Okay. 
and here's another chance to look there is another bearing here in the back um and down in there it looks like there's some sort of snap ring type deal and this is what it looks like see told you brand new uh But yeah, so what happened is this one I bought from Napa. It's supposed to be, they didn't have one for a C60. It's the exact same one as a C50, so you don't really have to worry. This one, when I ordered it, it was the perfect one. Anyways, this one right here, uh, the issue with it, um, if you can see back here, is that it didn't have a bleeder screw, so I tried making an attempt at one just to hold it so I get it on a trailer and get it off. Um, but I went and got some kind of brass fitting from hardware store. Uh, any Home Depot or Lowe's has one and then just a bolt to fit the threads. Uh, I tried putting some uh, Loctite on it or something, I don't remember. But anyways, just so you know, it leaks if you try to do that to rig your way around it because it's not got anything actually sitting down in it and you can't bleed your brakes that way. Like, yeah, you can see fluid coming out, but uh, it's not an actual representation. You don't know if there's air in it or not. Um, so anyways, we're going to take this off. And the worst part, I think, about this is the fact that we have to disconnect, like, take off these springs to drop the brake pads down on them. And getting the springs back on is a tremendous, like, effort. Um, I just end up grabbing either a pry bar or vice grips and trying to pull or stretch it or do whatever I need to do. But uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead, take off this line, and then we're going to remove this monstrosity I have back here. And uh, then there should be two bolts back there, one and two. We'll remove those. I'll tell you what size those are. And then we will get to the part of seeing exactly what all we have to pull out to get that out and the new one in. Okay, so something that stays there should be able to see me working on this. Uh, usually I use brake clock um, line wrenches. Uh, mine are here somewhere. Uh, I've got tools between school, work, uh, sorry, between school, here, and another place. So, 7 sixteenths, that'll loosen it up. Probably gonna drop a bunch of brake fluid here. But I like to get this disconnected so I don't forget about it and start trying to pull and then bend the line. And you can see it dripping there. Um, I think because I'm only doing this one, I may be able to uh, remove this spring and, well, just one of the springs. I might not have to do both, but uh, I'm going to see, I guess. Anyway, it's going to go ahead and get the bolts out of the back. I'm going to assume that those are half an inch. Lapses on the video. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is slip it off either there or there on either of these springs 
and that should give us enough play to get it loose. And then these things can go flying, so I don't really want that to happen right now. it did but it wasn't in me so that's all that matters okay so look at this this is like that's how much these springs compress uh i guess they need that kind of power on to stop whenever these have heavy loads but you can see down here the other ones how far out they're stretched. So that's why it's such a big deal to get these things back on the right way. And I thought we might be able to do it that way, but it's looking like. But you can see whenever I pull this, it kind of pumps down there. Okay. Not a pull the wrong one. But. And I should probably take off the. Okay, well, let's look at this. Uh, that's the worst idea I've ever had. Um, but redneck ingenu uh, ingenuity, I reckon. Redneck engineering. Um, might try to, might just keep this. Never know when another one's gonna go out that runs to a brake line. But, uh, so this right here, I'm not sure if it's showing in the camera. But that's what it should look like when a brake line needs to go into it. And that's what this one over here looks like as well. So, anyways, these just kind of pull right out of that. Kind of house it. And... Uh, and then you have this little piece down here. And what it does... this piece does is it just kind of holds it right there kind of keeps it in place so it doesn't move but like I said um, the way I did it whenever I did both brakes at the same time I just ended up taking uh, I believe I just took the whole thing off or I might have just took one side off and did the others but um, so at least getting you to this point you can kind of figure it out and as they always say if you're working with drums don't do both sides at the same time do this one and while you're doing this one if you can't remember where something goes if you didn't take pictures or something go to the other side look at it and be like oh okay that's how that goes so um we got to this point so we're gonna see if we can't uh go ahead and get the new one in um i'm gonna go ahead and get it ready Okay, so here's the little plungers. I'm not sure what these are called, to be honest, but you kind of just push them down into this hole. Sometimes they're hard, just most of the time they'll drop down in there, but you just got to get it past the head of it onto that little indention. I'll try this out first. And it dropped down in there just like that. 
see. Covered that indention. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Also, guys, I am not a mechanic, man. I just do stuff myself, or at least try to first. That way, um, I might save myself some money. And if not, well, I already got it took apart, so it shouldn't take charge me labor for doing that part. <laughs> Okay, took the little piece out. And you can see here that just like that other one, it's got a spot for the brake line, but has a bleeder screw. Make sure that you get the right one. The top ones are the bleeder screws on these because there's two of them um, in here. The top one is the one that gets the bleeder screw. That's very, very important. I'm probably preaching to the choir here, preaching to myself. Okay. And you can leave this on. It's not gonna make a big difference. We'll just leave it on and protect it just in case something wants to happen to it. While you're in here, don't hurt to clean the dust and dirt and whatever else is in here out of it. Oh, don't want to forget the little piece. Somehow I managed to set my phone on it. But, okay, so don't want to forget this little piece. Okay, so as I'm saying, don't forget that little piece. Uh, whenever I was cleaning up, I realized that I forgot this big piece, which is the dirt housing for the wheel cylinder. It, I don't think that it needs to be there, but it is supposed to be there. Um, I just missed it when I was putting things back together, of course, when I'm doing a tutorial. So as you look at the rest of this, just think, man, I can't believe he didn't put that on. I'm sure you would have anyways. Um, for whatever reason, it did not cross my mind. So again, put on this little shield uh, to keep dirt from possibly getting into your rubbers and stuff. I'm, I didn't go back and put it on, but if I have a problem in the future, I know what it is. Sit this right down in here. And then push it down there. show you this a little closer so little arms need to straddle the drum there it's going to do that on both sides and i'm gonna fix this by putting it up here also you can see like that's where the holes are it's where it's going to need to line up so this comes with it okay let's 
three eighths. Sixteenths. And you don't ever want to cross through one of these, so just make sure that you can get it somewhat started. resistance here is just a little dirt that probably got in there as I was moving. Yeah, it's moving good now. Yeah. And I mean this is like pretty much any drum. I mean whenever you go to bleed it you're gonna wanna Start with this side, furthest away from the master cylinder. And if I make any more videos, hopefully I get a little bit better. But Maybe once I pull this in, this will push it and kind of correct it. Just slide this half inch, obviously works perfect. Down on that, make sure that it seats into the little groove on uh, each of the drums there. Once again, double check myself. Make sure that this is tight, definitely tight. Okay. Time to put this spring back on. Okay, so this should be fine. If I remember correctly, it went like this. Should be hooking from the bottom here. And uh, I'm just gonna go back and verify that. One way to tell is look at the other side.
be careful doing this. This is not really the smartest thing, cause especially in the position I'm about to put myself in. Spring cut you off, hit me in the face. Uh, at this point, what you're not seeing is that I have 40 minutes of bloopers of me trying to get this thing on, and I finally just thought, let's put the crowbar in, or the pry bar in the middle of the spring. So. Okay, so that is how you get it on using only a pry bar. Uh, I used to, I uh, got one to get it to where it was. I wedged a thicker one in the spring and while maintaining tension on it, I pulled the other one and I pulled it back, slipped it over that. You gotta be careful because when you're at this angle, you're definitely in the line of fire of the spring. I mean, I've had it shoot everywhere while trying to do this, but um, Anyways, that's how it can be done without having a tool for a spring to pull it out and everything else. Um, so, uh, yeah, that tool, if you can get it, go get it. It would make a huge difference. It'll save you a ton of time. So, anyways, I'm going to see if I can't find anything to kind of clean this up. Yeah, I guess I'll just use my hand. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is absolutely work like raining cats and dogs up there. Um, anyways, I'm gonna try to wipe that up. Move on to reassembly. Okay. <clears throat> all right so now we're going to try to put this monstrosity back on here uh <clears throat> hopefully it goes together a lot <laughs> easier than that last part getting spring on there um lucky for you guys shouldn't have to worry about it too much because uh, i'm going to apply that movie magic and either time lapse it or cut it uh, we did get the spring back on in the correct orientation. We have the <clears throat> brake pads positioned correctly, the wheel cylinders positioned correctly, and we should be good to go. Everything has been verified tight, and I wiped off what I could. Uh, it'll dry off. Okay. Now, this thing is heavy, like I mentioned before. Okay, so we're going to try to get this <coughs> back up on there. Uh, wish me luck. Don't forget you have a bearing on that back side, so be careful. Okay. You get up this high, you might have to use your feet to push it on, but usually you're good. I'm going to go ahead and try to slide this bearing back in there uh, from earlier and try to turn the camera so you can kind of see it
some of their And we had the rounded side in there. Once again, clean any mud out of it from your boots if you're like me. And we're gonna wipe our hands up here. Uh, it's the towel that the truck gods have given us. Okay. And that bearing will seat as you put in the, uh, as you screw in your uh, axle nuts. And if it don't, you'll know because nothing will fit back together. And if you have a big enough socket or something, you can put this washer on so that way you don't damage the bearing. Kind of hammer it in there a little bit. So anyways, I'll put the washer back on. Don't forget that the washer has a key insert on the bottom, just like uh, this little guy. It's got one right there. And these axle nuts are just regular threads. They're not reverse threaded or anything like that. Um, make sure, try to Get them lined up correctly because cross threading it is not going to do anybody any favors. And I'm sure it's hard to find these. But, uh, let's see. It's dark out here now. I'm trying to find the little punch from earlier. If you remember, take this punch. Use it, like I said, like a rotary phone. And just keep on keeping on. Now, here we are, and having to turn it pretty good. Like I said, this is what's going to help seat your bearing. And uh, careful, because you can gouge yourself on the teeth here that hold in the axle. This is where if you had one of those axle nut sockets, it'd be very handy. You can see it while I'm tapping, like, we're not torquing it down or anything yet. We're just trying to get that bearing in position. Okay, no spiders were harmed in the making of this video unless he can't survive a fall from two feet. I'm to make this a short video. I'm not really sure how to because there's just so much like 
it's one of those things where it's not a lot and it's so much at the same time. Like, simple stuff, but if you don't do it right, you're probably going to have some issues. And I can't imagine anybody would want a truck this big having brake issues or the axle falling out of it or something crazy. In here, I think you can kind of tell it's starting to get a little bit tighter. Now it looks like that bearing has found your time. Okay. So now it's time for this little keyway thing. And like one or two have broken off over the years. It looks like three. So remember to line up this little keyway with the keyway in the bottom. Oh yeah, we're in there good enough. And then, here we go. The last axle nut. that I've just had. I'll flatten this one out because this is the one that I had locked in place for it earlier. It's nice for it to have a little bit of a lip but you can't get the axle nut onto it when it's like that. So we hammered it down just a little bit. <clears throat> and once again, going with this axle nut. I've been putting this off for so long. This truck's been parked right here for six months. And I've only been putting it off for the fact that it took so long the last time I did this. And I mean, like talking about half a day, try, just trying to figure out, okay, how do I need to do this? What am I doing? I kind of went into a blind. Um, People mention stuff on forums, but it's like, unless I do it, I'm the type of person, unless I do it, I really like, it's hard for me sometimes to read and do, not all the time, but on stuff I've never worked on, it's just one of those things, then whenever you take it down, it's like, oh, some of their comments make sense, you know, like, so I just figured I'd make a video on this. And in most positions, <clears throat> no matter which way it's turned, one of these keyways should hopefully line up. one of 
these. Okay, and we're about lined up with the one I had it on before. So, so right here is the time to try to flip it. Oh. I don't think it's going any further than that. And so I just put the keyway up in there so it's axle nut kind of lock itself and now I'm just going to use a hammer and a punch and kind of knock that in. It's important, make sure you're still gonna be able to get a screwdriver in there some, or something. Because first time I did this, I couldn't even, it took me forever to find something small enough to slip in there and bend it back down. So uh, just in case you ever have to, I mean, it's gonna be locked in place. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so the next thing to do is put in the axle because I mean, you want something there. Make sure that your axle doesn't have a bunch of dirt on it. Mine does not. You're going to kind of have to mess around until you find it. Go in to the diff. And kind of not going to go there. Twist. You'll find it's home. And... Hopefully it'll line up. And my teeth line up perfectly. So screw in your bolt you had from earlier, pull it out. And there it is. Now you have your axle back in there. Unthread your bolt. If I knew exactly what size thread this was, I would tell you. I honestly have no idea. Um, I just messed around until I found one that fit. Okay, so last step. Put some sealant on this. This one's still got plenty on it. So I'm just going to try to reseal it. And if it starts to leak, then I know I need to take it off. The good thing about it is it's only these five bolts, the washers. Um, let me get some of that dirt off there. But uh, like I said, be careful with the washers. You can always go get more, but it's a lot nicer when you don't have to. Just get them all threaded. Uh, if you're somewhere <clears throat> nice, you might want to put like a towel down because of the oil that comes out, the fluid that comes out. Okay. Then you're going to want to find a socket to go on that. Have a ton of oil on our hands. I'll have to clean this up later. 
And if you're using an impact, just go easy on those. Get them kind of snug. That's all you need. And if you want to hit them with one Ooga Dooga or a couple. But you just want to seal it first. And then... Pattern. Ideal. And that's all sealed. So, and like I said, if I need to take it off and reseal it, I will. But it should be good. Okay, last part. Putting in the little flathead screws that I'm pretty sure you don't even have to take that off that I do it. anything will give you a good idea of if anything else is going to be rusty closed. Well, I guess rusty shut would be a more appropriate term. Up here is in the shadow. That's not the <laughs> That's why you just working in the dark going by field. Well, there we go. Okay, once again, you don't have to go hard on these. Okay. Well, that's back together. Now it's time to put on the wheels. These heavy wheels.
now we're just going to jack it up and then we're going to uh, remove the jack stand. So. how to get to the brakes, change wheel cylinder, uh, remove the hub assembly, all that on a 60 to 66 C 60 uh, Chevy pickup truck, medium duty truck, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you like the video, please like it. I hope I can help somebody. The more information we get out there about these classic medium duty trucks, uh, the easier it's going to be for people to work on them and restore them. So thank you for watching.